Hello everyone, welcome to this video about some very cool Django Reinhardt phrases coming right up. So in this series, well, I intended to be a series, uh, I plan to show you some very cool Django phrases and the way this is this has come about is because I have a very large collection of Django stuff, phrases, licks, chords I transcribed through the years. And, th and the way that happened is that I, I am always listening to Django in some, some way, right? In the car, on my phone, while traveling, or just at home. And every time I hear something really ear catching, which is a lot of stuff with Django, when I'm, when, I, when, when I'm at home, I immediately run to my computer and transcribe it. And when I'm traveling, I write down what the song is, which year, and I look it up and then I write it down. And then I have this big PDF with lots of stuff. And the reason I never made a video about it is because it's unorganized in the sense that it's, it's not systematic. It's not like, okay, two five ones and then it's two turnarounds. I mean, I could do that, but I never did that. So it's just a large collection of stuff. The only thing that is written with the the transcription is the recording it comes from. But even that is not organized, right? I have some stuff from uh, a solo in the first page, but the same solo on the last page because I, I was listening to it again and I noticed something else. And this could be anything, right? It could be uh, some chords, it could be a lick, it could be something he plays behind the violin solo, it could be anything. So I decided you know what, I'm just going to make this video and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you five things, five or six things. And then when it's successful, when you like, when people like it, I'll make another one and I'll show you five, six more things. Not organized, just stuff I've, I thought would be nice to show you. So let's just get started with the first idea. Um, oh, let me, let's go back to this one. Okay, let's start here. It's a it's a two five one or five one, uh, but I think of it as a two five one, even though the two bar is empty. But you could play something in uh, in G minor um, because this is a two five one to F. So everything in the, on this PDF is either to F or B flat, mostly F. So even if the original is not an F, I always transcribe it in one key, so everything is organized. And when I'm when I'm seeing it, when I'm seeing something, I always know which key it is, it's easy for me to kind of connect everything. So this is a 251 originally from Coquette, the 1947 recording, which is of course in D, but here it's just in F and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Three, four. So it's, it's one bar C7 to F, but I'm thinking two, five, one. So the two bar to G minor, I just play something in the fifth position of G minor, right? And the fifth position of G minor is here. If you don't know what I'm referring to, that's my personal system of looking at the fretboard, the Van Hamert system. And um, I made a video explaining all of that and the description will be, uh, there will be a link in the description. And also if you want to tap, if you want to download these steps that you will see in this lesson, you can go to my Patreon page also a link, and there you can download all the tabs for all of my videos. So the first bar is empty, but you could just play something in the fifth position of G minor. Maybe you could play something like um, one, two, three, four, and then you go to the lick. Or maybe you play... Um, or maybe you play... So let me demonstrate this, how this lick will sound on a backing track. So I have a, I have a backing track for Hans Zucker Rose here. It's also on my channel, I'll put the link. And then I can play it, of course, in the A part, C7 to F, but I can also play it in the B part, because there is a 2-5-1 to B flat. So then I have to play in the fifth position of C minor, which is here. So. Okay, let me do it. Thank you. 
beautiful little phrase uh, featuring the, the the augmented fifth, the sharp the sharp five C seven. <laughs> this sound, which is a sound that Django really loved. Okay, uh, next phrase. It's another two five one. In F again, this is from uh, What is a Thing Called Love, 1947. It places in the bridge, I think, which is originally a 251 in B flat, but I transposed it to F. And let me first show you how I played, which is completely different fingerings or, or different strings even than Django. And I will explain why. But the way I played is like this three, four, one. <laughs> ones without the trills three four mm. uh. oh it's difficult to play that with, without the trill let me see oh yeah you could play yeah you should always practice this first without the trills uh, because it's way easier even though I got confused now but that's better three four uh. With trills, three, four, mm. Now, it's exactly the same notes as Django, but Django plays it, um, I probably cannot do it, but he plays it something like. Like that, right? Which is a typical way for Django. He uses those, those open, those high strings. It sounds maybe a little bit better, but the thing is, you're using so much, so many frets that then you can play it. There's not many keys you can play it in. And I like to keep it more contained so that I can play it in more keys. So now I can play it in D, for example. And for me, um, I'm thinking it's, uh, it's the first position of A7 here. Right? So I'm thinking about the five chord when I play this. So play it in, uh, let's say, let's do a, another key, E flat. So first position of, well, we just played in D, that's lame. Let's play it in D flat. So then the five chord is A flat seven. <laughs> Again, it, it says one fret lower. But I mean, you see how easy it is. I just find the five chords. Um, here's E7, so E7 to A. Uh, so let me play that with the backing track. Again, I can play it on the A part, right? That's the way it's written in the tab. I can play it in B flat. The, FF, the first position of F is here. Let me play that. Not, it's not a very easy lick, let me just warn you. It's, it's a little bit difficult and, and the fingering I use might be weird. Maybe you can come up with a better one, but I tried several ways and this for me feels the easiest, but I, it's still not very easy. With this stretch. You could play maybe. But I, I find that more difficult. Okay, let's go 
let's go where let's see. let's go to this long one the first page i mean this is four uh, systems this is four systems so you know what um I'll play four bars by four bars. So this is the bridge of Hans Zucker Rose from the 1949 recordings in Rome, which is my favorite Django recordings. And it's a it's a super weird bridge on its own. I mean, it's not weird, but it's it's very unusual. But if you hear it in the solo, it's it's a moment of genius. And I liked it so much that I just transcribed it. And I found a way to actually use it outside of Hans Zucker Rose, which I will show you too. But um, it sounds like this. Three, four, one. <laughs> That's a bridge, so that's what the first four eight bars, and then I just grabbed the third A too because it just continues with this, with this power three four one. It's very unusual. So let me give you a few pointers. Um, so this chord is is it's pretty difficult to play if you never played it. But it's a sharp nine voicing. So this would be B seven sharp nine. And I'm playing seven, seven, nine, nine, eight, ten, ten. So and then he's basically shifting this chord down from B7 to B flat seven sharp nine to G7 sharp 9 to F sharp 7 sharp 9. And the original chords are F7, so he, he thinks tritone substitute to B flat. And then on the B flat 6, he just plays B flat 7 sharp 9. It's like a bluesy thing. And then G7, he plays G7 sharp 9. And then C7, he plays F sharp 7 sharp 9. Again, it's the, it's the tritone. But then the way it makes it very special is with this interplay with the bass notes, which is not very easy to play because you have to play many of them with your thumb. Let me play it one more time with you, for you. One, two, three, four. Mm. A part. So this part is just a C7-9 forcing. Right, that's 7-8-7-8-8. Um, seven, eight, seven, eight, eight. And then just shift that like this. to make it sound like Django powerful is with his short upstroke before kada 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 but the weight should be on the downstroke and you should do it for in front of every of these chords otherwise the effect is gone and then this typical Django stuff uh, let me play that for you with the backing track on the bridge So now you ask, okay, but can I play this outside of Hunter Cross? You can. For instance, you could play this, and there's many bridges like this, right? This is the same bridge as there is in Coquette, for instance, or um, what's other song like this? Uh, Undecided. I mean, there's lots of bridges where you have a 2 5 1 to the 4 chord, and then you have a two five, long 2 5 back to the main key, but then the 2 chord is a dominant. That's what, what's happening here, right? This, the song is in F, and there's, here's the 2 5 1 to B flat, or 5 1 to B flat. And then there's the 2 5 back to F, so uh, G, C, but then it's not G minor, but it's G7. C7. So in Coquette, we have a 2 5 1 to G, 
or a 5 1 to G. That's the song. It's in D. And then it's E7, A7. Now, so you have to start on the tritone of the 5 chord, which is D7. So you start on A flat 7 sharp 9. And now you cannot go down, but you can play. You can just do the same trick with this chord. Let me uh, sh uh, show you how that would sound on Coquettes. Um, if I can find the backing track. There's also a backing track of Coquettes on my... Uh, yeah, I'll also link that. Here it is. Like that. Maybe the tempo is a little bit too slow to for this to be to sound optimal, but usually you're gonna play it faster anyway. But it's it's really fun and nobody's doing this. Well, maybe after this video, everyone is, would, would be doing it. But it is a great effect. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is a oh yeah, oh this is beautiful. This is something that Django plays behind Corpelli. So it's not a solo. It's he plays this behind. Um, uh, the violin solo, but it's very special. And originally it comes from Solitude, uh, in my Solitude, which is uh, in C. And here I put it in B flat. But, so it's, it's, it's for ballad. So let's let's go back to the original key, Solitude. So that song goes like... Excuse my singing. So, um, Django plays, so this, this 2, 5, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of uh, funny that 5, 1, that it's there, right? It's C to F, and then it's G7, so it's C to F, F minor, and then G7 to C. So on this G7, there's lots of weird stuff happening. I don't think they talked about what they want. But it's very clear that Django wants something like. Right, so it's like G7, D flat diminished, C diminished, B diminished, C, something like that. Or maybe. Like F, maybe. Something like that. Something with a descending bass line. But the bass player obviously is not aware of it. So uh, it's kind of weird. But. During Corpetti's solo, he plays tremolos on top of the chords on that point. So whereas G7, he plays three. So let me play. Da, 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 you go. So it's a it's a great lesson. So when whenever you have a, a five one or two five one to major key. You can just play, start with a diminished chord with the third on top, right? So it's D7, so there's a B on top. You start it on the second beat, and then on the third beat, you slide down, and then you slide down again, down again, everything two beats. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Resolve. And on the C, he plays. So it's just this forcing. Where you start the slide is the important, the, the, the important is the end point. So in this PDF, it's in B flat, of course, because everything is in F or B flat. And so in, in B flat would be, so we get F7 to B flat. So one, two, three, four. So 
I hear nobody doing this. It's a great little trick with those sliding down diminished chords. So let me play this on um, Hansa Gross. Of course, it's a little bit too fast for Hansa Gross, but um, just to get the, the general idea of it. So I'm going to play it in the third bar, right? Third bar, because then I have two bars of C7 to F. Oh, actually, it's in B flat here, so I have to play it in the bridge. Uh, so the A parts I just play some rhythm or something, and the bridge I will play. Um, I will play this exactly like it's in the tab. You get that idea, right? It's much too fast. But you hear how nice it sounds when you, whenever you do that. Okay, very cool. Let's go to the next one. It's also from Solitude. Uh, C7 to F, which is, I think, original because it's from the bridge. So we get the bridge of Solitude is... So F. F sharp diminished C C7. So on the C7 he does this. So three, four, one. So, so it starts on the second beat with this augmented chord. I just remind, I remember that, that the third is on top of, uh, of the dominant chord we're playing on. So it's C7, so it's E on top, one, and then sliding that two frets down, and then just resolving to this triad. And the nice thing is on the one of F, or on the first beat, there's still there's a mentored chord. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So the resolution is too late which you can copy, but it's more, that is a very nice effect. But it's also just these three chords. So let me play that, again, this is, this is behind the violin solo. Let me play that on Hansa Rose. And I can play it in the A part like this. And um, this rhythm is, is really for ballad, but uh, let me just play around with these chords. And then for the bridge, uh, I have to go to B flat, so I start with A. Yeah, let's do it. Like that. Um, it's, it, you can use it on Hunter Gross, but this is really um, ballad stuff. One. Okay. How many more? Two more, I think. Yeah. So this is really typical jungle. It's a turnaround. Now, one of the tricks that jungle like to use is just play a diminished arpeggio on a turnaround. So an easy way to remember is when there's a turnaround in F, like here, you just play an F diminished arpeggio, right? So the turnaround will be something like, it's actually a turnaround with a two, five, one before. So you get one. So it's the end of a song or it's the end of an A part or it's, it's the last four bars of a, of a crystal progression, like the end of all of me, for, in, for instance. And then um, you can play this diminished arpeggio. You can improvise with the diminished arpeggio, or you could play exactly what Django's playing here, which is really nice. It sounds like this: three, four, one, three, four. I was playing a 
rhythm that you want to take. One, two, oh yeah. Three, four. So, and which song I can I can show this? I can show this. I can show this on Coquette. I think it's also not too fast. Um, so it's great to play at the end of Coquette, or uh, you play this. You could even play it in the first A, right? So if we have to play it in D, so this was an F. Then I have to start here. Let's, let's try it all, uh, already on the first A. Here we go. Ah. That's it. Now I can do it because another turnaround. Sloppy, but it's 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 the it works the best actually when you are at the end of the form because it really gives it a little push extra push to play one more chorus right it's um, because you're ignoring the chords basically you're just playing a, a tension a, a real uh, heavy tension to resolve back to the one chord let me do it again but I won't play this phrase uh, I will play just something D diminished and you can hear what it sounds like I will do it in the first A again. Because the principle is just D diminished over this 2 5 and the turnaround. Like we play D diminished the whole way through. Maybe you play a little A7 at the end. Let, let me try that. If you want to hear Django play it, go to my Melancholy Baby in 1939, uh, the first take. Okay, I think this is the last one, and this is, yes, this is, these are Christoph changes, Christoph progression, which is an ending of many songs like All of Me, Django's Tiger, Them the Rise, I Can Give You Anything But Love, and this is one is from I Love You, a 1949 recording. So, so the second half of I Love You goes like, uh, yeah. Now the lick starts. So these, these changes, you probably heard them many times. Those are called Christoph changes. And Django plays this fantastic lick. Three, four, one. 
So there's the first four bars. And then we go to the second four bars. Three, four, uh. Three, four, one. So I don't have a backing track for I Love You, but I do have a backing track for I Can Give You Anything But Love. And I will put a link. So there is Christoph changes in, oh, the song is in G. So we start on the C. So then I have to start uh, here. Let me play that with a back and track. Mm. I can give you anything but love. Here we are. One more, one more practice. That's it. Okay, here we go. Ha! One more time. Here we go. Oh no. Sorry. Here we go. Go. Great, and you can of course play only the last part or the beginning. So here we go, six or seven Django phrases. They're not easy at all. This is not for beginners. I should have said in the beginning. It's, it, it's very difficult stuff. But it's, it's very fun to practice this and it's even more fun if you can pull it off uh, during one of your solos. And real Django fans will of course recognize uh, that you're playing something from, from Django Reinhardt and everybody will appreciate it. I know I do when I hear somebody play something really special by Django. It melts my heart. So I hope you like it. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, like the video, share it with friends, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!